So this is the geometry, section 1-1, called Nets and Drawings for Visualizing Geometry, and these are notes. Our learning objective is to make nets and drawings of three-dimensional figures. Come on, Menace. There we go. So make sure you include the section number and title. Make sure you include notes at this if you're taking notes for my class. You need to also um, have your name and the date. Our learning objective again is to make nets and drawings of three-dimensional figures. Now, if we're making nets and drawings and your notes don't have any drawings of 3D figures or any nets in them, you are not going to get full points. Look at the learning objective. It's going to tell you directly what should be included in your notes. Um, all right, so a little vocabulary check. We are having, there's three vocabulary words in our notes for section 1-1. I will be looking for all three. And it's um, this little vo um, vocabulary list is at the beginning of each section. So, all right, so a net is a two-dimensional diagram that you can fold to form a three-dimensional figure. It shows all the surfaces of a figure in one view. So for example, all right, so you're going to get problems like this, not only on your quiz, but in your practice. Um, the net at the right folds into a cube shown beside it. Which letters will be on the top and front of the cube? So let me show you the best way to draw a cube because I know not everybody has um, spent their time doodling. So the best way to draw a cube is to draw a nice square. So just draw a regular square. And then what you're going to do is you're going to parallel lines. I do it off to the right because I'm right-handed. But a nice parallel line from each corner. And then you get... From there, you can have a nice little cube. See, we're drawing. We're going to be drawing a lot of three-dimensional figures together, so we should probably figure out how. The the hard part is this is three-dimensional. My surface is two-dimensional, and bridging the gap between two dimensions and three dimensions. So that's the easiest way. Draw the front side just as it stands, and then parallel lines off. I go to the right because I'm. Okay. So which letters will be on the top? Uh, in front of the cube. So we took C. He is on the front right here. And we folded D to the right hand side. E is on the top. F is on the bottom. B goes on the left hand side. And poor A, he is all the way wrapped around on the back. So which letters will be on the top and the front of the cube? So front of the cube still gets to be C, and on the top is E. So E folds down and becomes the top, and C becomes the front. All right, so the net in problem one folds into the cube shown at the right. Which letters will be on the top and right side of the cube? So B is out front. I'm going to switch back because if B is out front, so C is on the right side, D is on the back. You guys already have the picture written down, so you're okay. Uh, which letters are the top and right side of the cube? So if B is the front, the top is still going to be D, and the right side is going to be the right, I'm sorry, I'm, so it, the right side of B is C. So we said that uh, top is still going to be E, 
and the right. See what we said. Okay, so this is a real world problem. We have this, our little graham cracker box, um, and as somebody who just enjoyed the wonders of a s'more this weekend, graham cracker boxes just close to my heart. Um, we want a net for the graham cracker box, so we are going to take our little cracker box and we're going to cut them along the edges. So first this bottom edge, then this front right corner, and then we're going to unfold them so that his net looks like this. So what I want you to draw on your paper is the original box and the net. All right, practice problem. This is, do we really get it? What is a net for the figure at the right? Label the net with its dimensions. And then while we're doing that, um, is there another possible net for the figure in part A? If so, draw it. Oh, goodness. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with the base. What shape is this bottom part here? Square, and in fact, it's a rectangle. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Boop, 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 boop. And let's put its dimensions on because it says it's seven and four. Then um, attached to this front side is a triangle. But I'm going to unfold it like a nice little carrier little cart. So I've taken care of this front side and I've taken care of the bottom side. Let's look at this shape right here. Now on my 3D drawing, it looks like a parallelogram, but what shape is that really? Rectangle. It's a rectangle and it shoots, if I was to unfold it, it would come off this way. Boop, boop, boop. Rectangle. And its side is 10. This is four. The top side is seven. Okay, so who lives on the back side? Oh yeah, this nice little triangle buddy. He's a matcher. He has also seven centimeters. And then we have to unfold the right hand side. I think we have all the dimensions on there. Is there another way to draw this net? What if I did, um, what if I unfolded it from this top crease here? So I have this top crease here, and I have a rectangle, a rectangle, a triangle, and a triangle. Where's my base lid? Let's put them, put them right here. It'll be seven. Just for fun. I guess we could do this as ten as well. All right, any questions about this got it. Doing nets. Net. All right, let's go next page. Isometric drawings. All right, so make sure you have your isometric drawing paper and I got it by googling isometric graph paper. Um, you guys can do the same and I just picked which one I liked. The whole purpose of isometric drawing is to try is to help you represent a three-dimensional figure on a two-dimensional space. So if, um, for instance, when we take this three, it's three cubes, two are stacked on top of each other, one is hanging out on the right-hand side. If I were to draw this, 
the front edges let's grab a regular pen so this guy right here is two blocks up so I draw two blocks up one block on this direction one block down one over one down and two back then I go and I put the depth on it and thankfully we have a depth of one block so you put the depth of one block on there and then you finish it up by putting the back side so that's one up one down one back and one down all right so if we're going to represent we have how many blocks do we have here we have four blocks why am i only seeing three blocks <laughs> Yeah, so we can't see, unless this block is floating in midair, which I will disprove, I, I, I am skeptical, um, it's sitting on top of another block. Okay, so we're going to draw this block. What, um, what I'm going to do is start at the top corner. I'm going to start that top corner right here. And it goes, that's that line. Um... I'm going to go down. Should we just do this cube? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do just this cube first. So we have one cube complete. Boy, it would be better if I use a straight line, huh? A little bit better if I use a straight line. Okay. So now I'm going to um, create this block here. So we're going to add a block to the left. And then we're going to add the block to the right. See, even with graph paper, my graph is wonky. Let me fix this line right here. Driving me crazy. There we go. So all you do is you recreate these lines onto your isometric graph paper. This, like any of the other things that we do, you get better the more you practice. So you guys will have some practice to do um, orthographic drawing. So we did an orthographic, orthographic drawing is another way to represent three dimensional figure. An orthographic drawing shows three separate views. Now this is really important. If you're gonna represent an orthographic drawing to me, it should have three views. Top view, a front view, and a right side view. And they need to be in this order. So your front is always going to go right here. Your top is going to go above it, like on top of the front. Yeah. And then the right one is going to go to the right of the front. So it should make sense. You're going to have a top, a front, and a right. There's still another half is what you're trying to tell us. All right, so in problem number four, orthographic drawing, we're going to take an isometric drawing and recreate the top, front, and right views. Um, our solid lines show visible edges, so anything that has a solid line is going to be what we can see. If you look, there is not a solid line here on the... Um, isometric view and it's not here on the um, orthographic view either. I, to show a hidden line, 
you dash the line here. So I have a line that goes back right here, which I can see when we go on our right right hand view, but I can't see it if I'm just looking on the front. So we indicate that it's the line is hidden by putting a dash. Make sure the front side is on the front, the top is above it, and the right hand side is on the right. All right, so we're going to recreate a top, front, and right view of this isometric drawing. So, give myself some room. So let's do the front view together. I'm going to start with this little square in the front because that's kind of, he's the easiest one to see. So let's label this one front. Let's make a nice square. So I've gotten this square right here. And then I'm going to have on top of my square, I'm going to go up about the same as two squares. I'm going to go right the distance of one square, and I'm going to come down distance of one square. I'm then going to go two squares to the right, come down and meet the bottom of my little block, and come back over. Okay, so that's our front view. Um, let's do the top view next. Top view goes on top of the right view. So if I was looking down from here, I'm going to start with this nice little square, that front block. So from the top, he looks like a little square. I'm going to, I'm not going to see any of this portion of the front view. All I'm going to see is right next to that block, the little square that I just drew, is another square. That's all I'm going to see on the top. I'm not going to see any of this. I'm just going to see that connected to my square is a rectangle that's two squares long. And that's all I'm going to see on the top. <clears throat> the right hand side, once again, I'm going to see this little part of my front square. So let's draw him. And then I'm not going to see any of this. I'm only going to see a nice little rectangle. That is two squares tall. And then sitting on top of him is one more little square. <clears throat> 